Right, morning everyone. I want to do a quick video this morning on optics. I get asked about optics a lot, um, my opinion on optics, whether optics are any good at range. Uh, so I just thought I'd say I'd do a little video on it and uh, try and cover it as best I can really. As always, you know, these, these are my opinions. This is what works for me. This, this is what I think will probably work for most of you. It's the way I think it should be done. Doesn't mean it should be done that way. Um, but yeah, right, I think an optic should be singular, just one. You only need one optic on your frame. Well, you don't even need an optic. But um, you know, if you want one on your frame, you should just have one. Uh, personally, I think it needs to be placed on the top corner to follow the line of your band. Obviously, the objective is always to get the ball to go straight. If you're shooting at 10 meters or something and, and your ball is striking, say, an inch left at 10 meters, by all means, you know, have your optics set to where your ball's striking. But if you start pushing ranges out of hunting, you're going to 30 meters, that ball that's an inch out at 10 meters, is now going to be three inches out or more at 30 meters so the objective is to get for an optic to be on the correct line so to be on the correct line at any distance you really need to be shooting off the end of your band so your bands are going to need to be dead straight and your balls are going to need to be dead straight at 10 meters 20 meters 30 meters so having an offset optic to allow for a technical mistake isn't going to work if you're in a hunting scenario like i say at 10 meters it can counteract you know, you could be shooting with a slightly twisted wrist, so putting a slight spin on the ball, which is sending the ball, say, an inch left. If that's how you shoot, fine, and in 10 meters, it isn't gonna matter. But over distance, your ball needs to be dead straight, so that optic needs to be following that band, and that band is gonna to need to be straight every single time. So your optic needs to be in line with your band. I don't know if we can get it there to the camera. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that optic. I've got a slightly larger band on than, uh, than the fork tip. But my optic is right off the edge. Let's pull it back so you can see of the band. There. Right, so let's go over why I wouldn't use optics for longer range. Right, now before we get onto the multiple optics, I just want to clarify uh, one or two things. Right, I've got no problem with anyone shooting with a twist in their pouch. I'm not saying if you shoot with a twist in your pouch, your ball isn't gonna fly straight because you know it's just not true. I've got a friend who shoots with a completely perpendicular frame and has his uh, pouch twisted at 45 degrees and his balls fly dead straight. You know, so no matter how you achieve it, whether it, you know you have to put a twist in your frame, uh, your pouch to get it to fly straight, you know, that's fine. No, no matter however you achieve it, the one thing you need to do is get your ball to fly dead straight at, at, at any given distance. And for that to be constantly achievable, your band at some point needs to pass underneath the center of your eye. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we are. I, mean, I, I picked the, uh, the example of the slight twist in the pouch because that's what happens to me. If I have a slight twist in my pouch, when I put my um, thumb to my anchor point, my thumb naturally sits at a slight angle. Now rather than try and change that, I'd rather try and work with something that's natural because if it's natural, you're going to be able to repeat it again and again and again. <clears throat> so to counteract that, what I do is I, sh I shoot with a slightly canted frame. The dog's probably going to go mad now. So my anchor point comes back to here and my hand is at a slight angle. Let's try and get it so you can see the bands. Right, so you can see the bands are at a slight angle. If I was to release on like that, my shot would go about an inch left at 10 metres. So all I do is that. That's how I shoot. I shoot with a slightly canted frame just to counteract See them bands dead straight. Bands should, you should be able to see dead straight in the centre of my eye. So to get my ball travel dead straight, I need to keep my bands perfectly parallel. I'm sure if I wanted to try and work out that I could twist the frame, I'm sure I could spend time and you know work out how to keep my frame dead straight and twist the pouch and move to a different anchor point, all these kinds of things to try, you know, to shoot with a completely flat frame and twisted pouch, but I don't need to, that's what works for me. And if what works for you is shooting with a, a dead straight frame with a twist in your pouch, that's great. You know, the, the, the objective is to get that ball to fly dead straight down that line of that band. Now, however you, you achieve it, doesn't matter, but that is the objective. The ball flies dead straight down the line of that band every single time, then you're basically the whole way there to shooting accurately at range. It just comes then down to practice. Right, optics for longer range shots. So when we're going from having one optic on the frame, which
which is set on your top corner to follow the lines of your band to having now say three down the side uh, you've got one set at say 15 one at 20 one at 25 they're not going to work uh, in hunting scenarios again temperature is always different so that's always going to give you a slightly different drop um, as well you can't actually see, if you're shooting with the bands to go straight you can't see the optics uh, so what happens obviously your optics set on the top corner of your frame because that's where your shots going because you want it to go straight every time so your optics set on the top corner of your frame the next set of optics are set just out to the right so if you don't want to see your target on that optic you've got to push your frame out to the left so there's our target there's our optic we're going to move across to see the uh, elevation so what's just happened we're going to send our shot to the left so optics down this side of the frame aren't going to work um, they, they are more of a, a gimmick thing than anything uh, yeah that that is <laughs> the kind of the way it is for me um, yeah if, if you know if you've got all your optics set over this side it, it's still not going to work you know you, because at some point your ball is going to be crossing it you know you, your ball isn't truly following the line of the band because your optic isn't following the line of the band and the ball is going to go where the line of the band is unless you're putting some kind of spin on it to get it to go a different way whereas if you are the ball's doing that anyway so it's still not going to be accurate dead straight at any given distance so you know aside from your shots going to go left you can't really see them anyway you know so I'm shooting both eyes open I can see my optic on top but I wouldn't be able to see an optic around the side because the bands in the way and the frames in the way so another thing people will do to counteract that is they'll go like that so they can see their optic so they count their head over well now my eye isn't looking anywhere near down the band so my shot isn't going to go straight anyway um, yeah like I say this is just my opinion it's optics down the side in a hunting scenario don't work um, similarly I saw or I've seen some cards you know that you can put in the top that's going to give you a load of little points so you, you know you can put that point on at a set range da, 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 da. Well, you know, these, these points are so small you gonna spend more time trying to find the point you want to look at than your target if you want to be accurate at distance you need to be looking at your target you need to learn how to shoot you need to learn your holdovers at range. It's, it, you can only learn it through familiarity, familiarity in shooting. Um, nothing's going to give you the answer. There's no quick fix. So, you know, I've got, I've got an arm's length, and let's say I've got 10 reference points one millimeter apart, and I'm supposed to be looking at a target 30 yards away. Well, I can't look at that target 30 yards away while I'm trying to pick out the four mil mark on a, on a reference point on the frame. You know, your focus is going to be back at your frame. You're going to be completely off your target. The idea is a, a clear reference point gives you your line. I can see that my reference point, if I look 30 yards, 40 yards, whatever, I can still see this reference point because it's, it's bright, it's clear, and it's singular. If you start putting loads of them in there in, in a short space, you, you're just going to confuse yourself. You know, am I looking at the female? Am I looking at the four mil? Is it 35 yards? Is it 45 yards? But, you, know, you know, there's so much going on, it's just, it's just not applicable. So, you know, a singular optic down the point of the band, down, straight down the line of the band is, is the only way to go if you want to use an optic. Um, like I say, loads of optics in a small space, it just clutters it, you, you can't read it, you can't look at that and look at your target. And what you always want to be doing is always looking at the target. The optic should just be something that's in your peripheral vision. You never actually bring your focus back to it. It's the same with any shooting sports or, look at, or darts. You know, you look at the board, you don't look at the tip of your, of your dart. Your tip of your dart might be in your peripheral vision you can see it here but you're looking there um so yeah that's that's the way it is i think with optics you know i don't think all these sort of gimmicky they look good but in the real world in a hunting scenario they don't work singular optic learn your holdovers holdovers are also going to change with heat you know let's say you you drill an optic at 25 meters and you've worked it out and yet now i can use that optic at 25 meters it's summertime brilliant now we go to the winter and you've got three inches more drop at 25 yards well now your optics useless you know singular optic is the way forward and that optic should be set on the dead straight line 
of where that ball fires. The rest of it needs to be learned with holdover and practice. Right, so how do I go about learning to shoot distance? I'll always start underneath the target. So let's say we've got a target at 30 meters, uh, it's a pheasant. So I'll come up through its neck, up to its head. I'll pause for a second on its head, only a split second, <clears throat> just to allow me to focus in on where I want the shot to go. I'll then move away from its head to what I feel is the right distance above, pause and release. Um, I've got friends who will come up through the neck, up past its head, no pause, up to the top and release as they pass over with no pause. It, either way is fine. Um, I think coming up through it that way gives you a better feel for its line, a better feel for distance. Um, if you insert straight over the top, you know, it's, it's about there. Um, I don't feel this is an effective method, as an effective method as coming up through it. Because you know it's a lot harder to pick your line if you're just inserting straight over the top. If you come up through it, you know you're on the right line. It's then just practice and repetition of feeling your distances out um, to get it right. There's no, there's no shortcuts really to learn to shoot at range. Um, like I say earlier on, the, the optics aren't the best solution. They don't really work for me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's time in versus results out really. Come up through your target, always keep your focus on the target itself. And when you feel it's about right, clean release. And you're going to be there or thereabouts. This is why it's so important to get your ball going in a dead straight line at any given distance. You know, if your ball's in a dead straight line, you're pretty much all the way there to be an accurate distance. You just need to work out the correct holdover and that's it. You know, so happy shooting. Cheers.